Hey, what's going on YouTube? Lights and buttons. Today there's something special. There is something a little bit different about the channel. We've reached 100 subscribers. Yeah! Right now, I just want to take a moment to give a big shout out to you subscribers for making this channel happen. If you haven't subscribed already, please hit that subscribe button. It helps me to grow this channel and I'm pretty excited now that we've hit the three digit mark to go beyond to a thousand and much more. Without any further ado, let's continue on with this video. Now here on Lights and Buttons, in this episode we will be talking about adding a door projector that will have an LED that will shine a customized logo onto the ground. If you've been doing some Google searches on this, some of them will allow you to replace the housing. Um, in this case, Hondas and Acuras will have uh, a housing that shines directly downward and you can replace it with a customized projector. Over here we have the housing for the door light. We're going to take it apart and inspect the elements. So here on top, there's a black cover. We can pinch in and start removing this section. Be careful not to pull too hard because you don't want to break the uh, plastic pieces. Okay. Now, you'll see right away that this thing is loose. Um, the LED is here along with the electronic components. We're going to put this aside. So here in this section we have the lens assembly as well as the O-ring. The O-ring um, can kind of move around so as you can see. Be careful not to lose that. That will help uh, keep the moisture out of the unit. And to open this part, it's a little bit tricky. You have to kind of pry open the uh, edge. So if you look over here along the side, um, there's a little bit of a gap where you can fit your fingernails in. I wouldn't use a screwdriver because this, this is a uh, pretty delicate. Now, as you're opening this up, be careful not to open it too quickly because otherwise the lenses will just fly everywhere. So I got my fingernails in between the case is opening and this is what it should look like. Now, what happened was these two lenses got caught in here. I'm going to move these two over. Okay. All right, so this is very important. The way the lenses are, the three lenses over here, this one, this one, and this one, all have their um, lenses stick into the right. And then this last element here has this lens pointing to the left. So make sure you memorize that order. Now this middle piece is what we're going for. This has the projection image. And what we want to do is to remove this, which is simply held in by pressure. Um, along the back over here, you see a little nub. We'll push that out. And it doesn't matter if the lenses actually come out or not, but now we have the logo. I'll put it down over here. You know, here, here's the logo. And we want to pry this out by going along the edge over here. No tools needed. You can just use your fingernail. All right, so we're going to pry this back part out. So this comes apart in three different pieces. So this first piece is the thin part. It has four different pegs that will lock into the second part. And you have the corresponding slots for this to lock in. And then you also have uh, this uh, transparency paper looking thing. And this is what we're going to replace. Now next up, we're going to set up our image. But before we hop on the PC, we are going to have to grab some transparency paper or transparency film. Now we need this because if you have an opaque paper, the light is not going to shine through. We need something transparent to print on so that we can put it into the projector and then have the light go through and project your image properly. Now I don't recommend any specific brand here in this video. This is one I particularly picked up. It's called Apollo, uh, but I just looked around. This was a good price and fits the type of printer that I have. So I decided to grab it. So I fired up GIMP and if you're not familiar, GIMP is a uh, free open source software that you can use to manipulate images. 
Um, and in this case, I'm bringing in an SVG file, which is a vector base file. And the nice thing about that is that you can adjust it to any resolution that you really need to. Um, but in this case, I'm, I'm going to be working with a relatively smaller image. So I want to scale it down. Uh, I was kind of conservative at first, so I did it to a higher resolution. And then after I imported it to GIMP, I started to edit the image. I added some transparency to the background. The original background was white, so I took that out, made the logo itself white, and then finally filled in the background with a black color so that it will block out the light. After I was done editing the image, I decided that this was way too much resolution for the size that I need, which is about one centimeter. So what I did was I scaled it down to 120 by 120. Now here, one thing I would have changed is the print resolution, which is currently set to 90. I'd bump that up to 300 DPI instead of the default value. Now you're up to the point where you can print. I recommend you start on white paper just so you can do some tests. And once you're satisfied, go ahead and start printing on the transparency paper. All right, we have removed the lenses from the housing, but that's not important right now. The important thing is that the printed image is now cut to a circle. Now, I'm not an expert at cutting at all, I'll admit. So this is the best I can do. You guys can probably do a much better job than I can. Um, this is about a centimeter wide in diameter, so I tried to match the shape. Um, so on the PC, I matched the 300 DPI output with the 120 by 120 image resolution. Printed that out on the paper, and here we are. Now we're going to transfer this into this holder. Next up, we'll add this back to the lens housing. Now before we put everything back together, let's take the lens assembly and hold it up to a plain wall. Then take a cell phone and turn on the LED so we can project to see what kind of image we'll see and that way we can make sure that everything comes out right before we install it into the car. Now as you can see the logo is mirror image so we'll have to reopen uh, this lens assembly and flip the logo around. I have now flipped the image around so it's now facing in the correct direction. If you're doing the test and you can't get the image to focus at all, make sure you double check the lens in your lens assembly because if you have the lenses in the wrong order or if they're flipped around, that won't make the image project correctly. So now that that's done, we'll put this back together. We have the two covers and the O-ring. So make sure you have the O-ring back in. And for this, the way I have this set up, the small end, I guess the end with the notch, will face downwards. And uh, what I like to do is this handle over here, I'll face it towards an edge so that I can fine tune it later. You can rotate this to adjust the logo angle so that when you open your door, it's facing the correct direction. You take this cover and then you slide it back on top. This has the LED again and the connection to your uh, the rest of the car in terms of the power. It snaps on and you're done and here's the final product looks pretty nice the uh, the bottom edge is uh, I think a little too close to the border of the lens so it's a little distorted but for the most part here it is now in terms of putting this back together I simply plugged it back in there's only two prongs I put electrical tape to secure the connection I put the housing back into the door frame um, or door panel, whatever you call the, this trim. Um, also put some electrical tape along the sides just so that it won't pop out. It has a little bit of a looser connection compared to the original lights, but a little tape uh, doesn't hurt. And there you have it. Now you have a customized logo that projects from your car door. You can geek out just like me whenever you show up to a place at night because you can't see it in the daylight. Um, I hope you find that video interesting. Um, I certainly had a lot of fun doing this project. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you next time.